What is going on, wonderful people? It's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This video is brought to you by TrueLearn, which is a great website that has thousands of cases with answers and explanations. Use the link in the description box to get a special discount. Today, we'll talk about endocrinology cases. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. If you go to truelearn.referralrock.com slash l slash medicosis, you'll find thousands of cases that will prepare you to become a doctor, a nurse, physician assistant, pharmacist, dentist, occupational therapist, you name it. They have question banks for every standardized test you can imagine. Starting with case number one, we have a 42-year-old woman presenting to the emergency department after an episode of confusion and blurry vision. She reports similar episodes for the last three months, but says that they are now occurring daily, and in some instances, multiple times throughout the day. During these episodes, she also experiences tremors and diaphoresis. She says that her symptoms are relieved by drinking orange juice. Yum, yum, yum. Her husband has a history of type 1 diabetes, and she says that she used his home glucose meter to confirm that she was hypoglycemic during several prior episodes. Her medical history includes major depression, and she currently takes sertraline. The patient is admitted to the hospital, and lab studies are performed after she complains of another episode of symptoms. The results are shown as follows. Here's the glucose. Her glucose is 42. The reference is from 70 to 110. Her insulin is 35. The reference is less than 3. C-peptide, about 5. Reference is less than 0.6. The question is, which of the following is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Is it A, adverse event caused by the antidepressant medication, or B, glucagon-secreting tumor, or C, pancreatic beta cell tumor, or D, surreptitious administration of insulin, or E, surreptitious administration of pioglitazone? Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. Now, pause. So what's going on here? Well, there is hypoglycemia. And we have symptoms of hypoglycemia, such as confusion, blurry vision, tremors, and diaphoresis. Her glucose is lower than normal, her insulin is higher than normal, and her C-peptide is higher than normal. When insulin is high and C-peptide is high, you know that this excessive insulin has to be coming from the pancreas. Not from a medication, not from an insulin injection, but coming from the pancreas. Because when the pancreas makes insulin, it makes insulin, yes, but it makes it together with C-peptide, and both of them are secreted together. And I have talked about this in my endocrinology playlist. So, when insulin is high and C-peptide is high, we know that the pancreas is to blame. So, there could be a tumor in the pancreas, and this tumor is making what? It is making too much insulin. And which pancreatic cells secrete insulin? Let's review. Alpha cells secrete glucagon, beta cells secrete insulin, and delta cells secrete somatostatin. So this is an insulinoma, or a pancreatic beta cell tumor. Next, question number two. We have a 35-year-old Gravida 1 para 0 woman presents to her obstetrician for a scheduled prenatal appointment at 25 weeks of gestation. She has no significant past medical history and has received appropriate prenatal care. Her family history is significant for a mother and a father with type 2 diabetes. She mentions that she is always thirsty and urinates very frequently, but she assumes that this is caused by her pregnancy. The father of the baby has no significant past medical or family history of disease. Her temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, pulse is 88 per minute, respiration 11 per minute, blood pressure 111 over 70, BMI is 32, physical examination is unremarkable. Pelvic examination is remarkable for an enlarged uterus relative to a gestational age. Fasting oral glucose tolerance test is administered and serum glucose level are measured at fasting and at 1 and 2 hours after the administration of 75 gram oral glucose load. The results of the test are shown in the table below. Her fasting serum glucose is 110, and then when we administer the 75 gram oral glucose load after one hour, her glucose is 195, and after two hours, her serum glucose is 160 milligrams per deciliter. The question is, which of the following is the most likely underlying mechanism of this patient's current lab findings? 
is a decreased insulin production, enlargement of pituitary gland, increased production of thyroid binding globulin, increased release of oxytocin, production of human placenta lactogen, or release of tissue factor into maternal circulation. Please pause the video. So what's going on here? Well, we have a family history of type 2 diabetes, that's a risk factor, always thirsty and urinates very frequently. These are symptoms of diabetes. The fetus of a diabetic mother usually has macrosomia and hence the enlarged uterus relative to gestational age. That's a big baby. The normal fasting serum glucose should be less than 95, so 110 is high. The one hour glucose tolerance test, normal value should be less than 180. This is 195, which is high. After two hours, it should be less than 155. 160 is higher than normal. This mother has gestational diabetes. Why does gestational diabetes happen? The pathogenesis of gestational diabetes involves human placental lactogen, also known as HPL. There is another name for human placental lactogen. It's also known as chorionic somatomammotropin. Why do you call it somatomammotropin? Because it's like somatotropin. What is somatotropin? Somatotropin is the growth hormone. What does growth hormone do to serum glucose? It raises serum glucose. So when I see that the blood glucose is high, I know that human placental lactogen is capable of raising the blood sugar. Where does the human placental lactogen come from? It comes from the placenta. So we only see it during pregnancy. No pregnancy, no placenta, no HPL. Question number three. We have a 48-year-old man is seen at the clinic complaining of severe lower back pain that started two days ago. He said it began suddenly when he was moving a couch by himself from his living room into his family room. He denies any trauma in the past, but notice that he has been bruising more easily and has gained weight unintentionally. He was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis 40 years ago and takes appropriate medications. His temperature is 37.5 degrees Celsius, pulse is 78 per minute, respirations 13 per minute, blood pressure 165 over 90 millimeters of mercury. On physical examination, he has increased fat deposits on the sides of his face and tenderness over his lower lumbar vertebrae. A lumbar vertebral body fracture is seen on x-ray. Which of the following is a precursor to the substance that is most likely to be responsible for this patient's signs and symptoms? Is it A, 11-deoxycorticosterone, B, 11-deoxycortisol, C, dopamine, D, estrone, or E, testosterone? Please pause the video and try to answer this yourself. What's going on here? What's going on is that we have a person with lower back pain. We have a fracture here, so weak bones. Blood pressure is high, fat deposits on the sides of the face, and is gaining weight. This is Cushing syndrome or Cushing-like or Cushing-goid. What causes Cushing? Too much cortisol. What is the precursor to cortisol? The precursor to cortisol is 11-deoxycortisol. This is the precursor to cortisol. So let's write 11 deoxy cortisol here, and that's the precursor to cortisol. What about 11-deoxycorticosterone? No, that's different. 11-deoxycorticosterone is a precursor to something else. It is a precursor to aldosterone. So, the precursor to aldosterone is 11-deoxycorticosterone, whereas the precursor to cortisol is 11-deoxycortisol. And this patient has too much cortisol. Can we explain the hypertension? Sure. Excessive cortisol causes salt and water retention, which tends to raise the blood pressure. Also, this salt water retention can be responsible for the weight gain. Add to that that cortisol increases blood sugar, leading to hyperglycemia. Cushing has abnormal fat distribution. Excessive cortisol can lead to weakening of the bones and excessive bone fractures, including vertebral fractures as well as a vascular necrosis of the hip. Question number four. We have a 52-year-old man presenting to the office due to worsening back pain and joint pain. These symptoms have been worsening for the past year, and he reports stiffness in his knees when walking. He also says that his hands have gotten larger and that his wedding band no longer fits. 
He has no other medical conditions and his only medications are over-the-counter pain relievers. He does not use tobacco, alcohol, or illicit drugs. His father was diagnosed with colorectal cancer at the age of 75 years. Physical examination reveals coarse facial features and a protruding jaw. Dental examination reveals widely separated maxillary teeth. There is swelling and crepitus in his knees bilaterally. The remainder of his examination reveals no additional abnormalities. His serum glucose is 170 mg per deciliter. Elevated serum level of which of the following is the most sensitive test for this patient's diagnosis? Is it A, cortisol, B, glucagon, C, growth hormone, D, insulin-like growth factor 1, or E, prolactin? Please pause. So what is going on? We have back pain, we have joint pain. We have hands that are getting larger. We have coarse facial features, protruding jaw, widely separated teeth, hyperglycemia. What is this? This is too much growth hormone that started after closure of the feces or the epiphyseal cartilage plate. This disease is known as acromegaly. What's the difference between acromegaly and gigantism? Gigantism is caused by excessive growth hormone secretion before the closure of the epiphyseal cartilage plate. But acromegaly is caused by excessive growth hormone after the closure of the epiphyseal cartilage plate. So this patient is not gonna get taller anymore, but will get thicker, leading to coarse facial features. The maxilla is getting bigger and the joints hurt. So what is happening in acromegaly? Well, the pituitary gland is secreting too much growth hormone. And when the pituitary gland secretes too much growth hormone, this growth hormone is going to go to the liver. And it's going to say to the liver, Dear liver, please make me some insulin-like growth factor number one, which is responsible for the bone growth. It's insulin-like because insulin is anabolic. And this IGF-1 is anabolic as well. Hence, the protruding jaw, the widely separated teeth, the larger hands, etc. Number five, we have a 27-year-old woman coming to the gynecology clinic complaining of nipple discharge. She notes bilateral gray color discharge from both nipples that began two weeks ago. Normally, she experiences menses every 28 days, but has not had her period for the past two months. She denies any vaginal discharge or genital lesions. She is otherwise healthy apart from headaches she started experiencing one month ago. She is in a monogamous relationship. Vitals okay, physical exam is okay. Which of the following tests should you order initially? Is it A, brain MRI, B, pelvic ultrasound, C, prolactin levels, D, thyroid stimulating hormone, or E, pregnancy test? Please pause. Now, some students will say, oh, I recognize this. The bilateral gray color discharge from both nipples is galactorrhea, which means this could be a prolactinoma. And if this is a prolactinoma, then I need to order the prolactin levels. Nuh-uh, that's not correct. That's not what you do first. Okay, let me look at the brain for pituitary adenoma then. Also incorrect. That's not what you do initially. Okay, then maybe I order the TSH level because there is a relation between the TRH and the prolactin. That's not what you do initially. Now pay attention. This woman has not had her period for the past two months. What is this? This is secondary amenorrhea. And what is the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea? And the answer is pregnancy. So the next best step is urine pregnancy test. First, you rule out pregnancy. Then you start thinking about other tests. Again, I repeat, the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea is pregnancy. Hey, what's the difference between primary amenorrhea and secondary amenorrhea? In primary amenorrhea, we have a female that has never had her period before. But in secondary amenorrhea, well, she used to have a period. She used to have menses, but now she does not. This is secondary amenorrhea, and the most common cause of secondary amenorrhea is pregnancy. And here is one more. I want you to pause the video, read the question, and let me know your answer in the comments. Let's see who is going to arrive at the correct answer first. Please comment below. If you click on the link in the description box, 
you'll go to TrueLearn, which is not just a question bank, but it also provides detailed explanations and in many cases with explanation tables like this. Here is a table for Marfan syndrome. You learn about the genetic defect, that it's associated with elevated TGF-beta. You learn about the clinical features of Marfan and the complications of Marfan syndrome. There is a pycmonic to watch, which is animated pictured mnemonics. You can subscribe to TrueLearn and pycmonic together when you click on this link. TrueLearn has question banks for all of these standardized exams. TrueLearn has thousands of questions and this is my best feature you can sort the questions by the difficulty level. So you can tell TrueLearn, hey, I want you to create a block of questions for me, let's say 40 questions, whose difficulty level is one, the easiest, or 10, the hardest, or anything in between. Moreover, you can answer questions on a specific topic. For example, you can create a question block just on the topic of tuberculosis or sarcoidosis or lupus. I have personally tried TrueLearn. This is my score and this is my percentile. I need to do better. So what are you waiting for? Click on this link in the description box. You'll get a special discount for using my link or you can use discount code Medicosis. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you TrueLearn for sponsoring this video. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.